Hello my fellow Freedom Builders and welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna have yet another video about a little exciting growth stock that I'm planning to put a bit of my money in. I've actually already put in a limit order so I hope to get filled today and we're gonna have a look at what they do, what their numbers are, how the technical analysis looks and why I actually think this could be a very exciting stock with a very small portion of my portfolio. So before we go any further, remember to subscribe and like and all that below the video so we can get on. Now let's have a look at it because many people might think, what on earth is the digital turbine? We've never heard about it before. No, and um, that is because it is a company that, that delivers some product that we as normal retail customer never really know is there. Actually, their products can be a bit annoying. I'll get back to that in a second. So what we can see here is Digital Turbine is they have been on a very nice trip up here from around three and a half and up with 300 and something percent. And again, you might say I'm not buying stocks that has gone up so much, but I am a trend follower. So I follow strong trends and this is a strong trend. If we look back in time, we can see that they have actually had price tags up towards $32. So I don't know if they're going up there again, but if they do, it is nice. As we can see, they are in a green zone, meaning that they are doing better than the overall market and that uh, the RSI here on the 14 weeks is uh, in the positive. Here you can see one of the reasons why I, my eyes fell on this is that it is in a green zone and then it breaks up through a, a good resistance area here. It has some sort of a sideways retracement and then it breaks up. You can imagine kind of a box here and it breaks up through the box. It did that yesterday and that is where I got an, uh, an eye on it. I, it had been on my observation list for a while, but this break was uh, the trigger that really got me interested. Now, what does what, what, what do they what do they do? Well, if we read at their own website here, I, I'm not sure if you get any, uh, any more clever here, but let's just have a look. Digital Turbine works uh, at the convergence of media and mobile communications delivered end-to-end -end products and solutions for mo mobile operators, device OEMs, and other third parties. Uh, this is rubbish. This is, this is Chinese or Russian or whatever it is to me. I simply don't get it. So I had to dig a bit further in and found out that what they actually do is that they help producers uh, of networks or of OEMs, uh, telephones, tablets, uh, televisions, they help them monetize the devices. They simply have a software called Ignite that either display apps on the devices or install apps. Uh, sometimes even apps without you giving the, uh, the okay for it, without your consent because uh, sometimes they have, this, they have this Ignite software put into the devices and when you open it up the first time, it starts downloading all sorts of apps and you're wondering where on earth did, did these uh, apps come from? But that was probably from the Ignite software simply helping uh, downloading these all at once. So if we're looking at it, uh, we have the description here of uh, the company and I will, of course, as always, link to this below. Let's see if we can get a bit smaller here and just uh, quickly have a quick over, uh, overview here. You can see that their revenue is going up quite nicely. Their adjusted EBITDA is going up. It looks good. The company operate, uh, it operates at a global scale and right now it has 40 plus partnerships. Uh, I'll show the, uh, you some of the names in a second. You know many of them. Uh, 2.3 billion apps preloaded globally uh, across devices. That is quite amazing. And right now, 300 million plus devices installed with digital turbine software. So they are out at a very large amount, around 10% of all smartphones in the world has their software, uh, software in. Actually, 13% if, uh, if we take away Apple. I'm not sure that this Ignite software can get into the Apple products. So uh, they have active campaigns in 150 countries and get 10 million new devices on per month and so on. So they're growing quite a lot. 
They have some operators that they work with, the Verizon, AT&T, Cricket, you know a lot of these. Uh, the OEMs, uh, Samsung, Lenovo, Motorola, Acer, Panasonic, uh, CTE, yeah, and I know at least half of these. So they are working with some very large players in the market. Um, all of this, I'll let you uh, study this in, in details. But uh, what we can see is that they have a number of different products. Some of them are meant to show the ads. Uh, all of a sudden you're sitting with your smartphone and ads start coming up or at your, your PC and, and you're wondering, uh, did I really install anything to show these ads? No, you may not have done so deliberately, but by doing some sort of clicking or forgetting to, maybe you're getting an, an antivirus software and you forget to remove a little check mark and all of a sudden you have the software in and it starts showing ads. It is right, quite annoying, but it seems like it is a very lucrative business. So in here you can read all about it and they are, as you can see here, the number of devices they are installed in is growing uh, quite steadily and um, they have some very large visions as for their uh, company. Here we can see some uh, something about the, the revenue on the different uh, devices they are on. We can see that their quarterly revenue going up. As you know, I am a trend follower, both of price, stock price, but also a trend follower of fundamentals. And I certainly do like to see fundamentals going up like this. Um, here is the, the uh, annual revenue here. Uh, a KGAR, a compound annual growth rate of 67% per year. That is quite amazing. So you can dig into all of these numbers for yourself. Let's just have a look at the Stokopedia platform just to have a quick overlook, overview here. Quality of earnings 64, that's actually okay for a tech company like this. Uh, the momentum is uh, 91, of course, should I say, because they are going very much up here. The PE ratio would scare some people away, uh, almost 40 here. But then again, when we divide by the uh, expected growth uh, for the next year, we actually get a PEC ratio of only 0.9. Meaning, I do like this PEC ratio to be below two because that means that we are not paying an insane amount of money for future growth because sometimes we get a bit too blind by just staring at the PE ratio because that is a picture right now. And it is okay to look at a PE ratio if we have a, a, a bit of a, a dusty company that grows 5% per year. And then of course we could look at the PE ratio. But if you're looking at a company growing 50 or 100% or per year, then the PE ratio right now doesn't make so much sense. Then you have to divide it by the f expected future growth. So that actually looks quite okay here. Uh, if we're looking at return on capital, return on equity and operating margin, that is uh, great. And their operating margins are actually getting a bit better. Uh, Petrosky score is six is great and a good old C score, meaning that they're quite solid uh, on the financials. As you can see the graph here, they have been in, they have been losing money, but here in 19 and 20, they are starting to make money. And it seems uh, that they are following that path uh, quite well. It was a bit, now they, I should say they're coming out with their numbers, the next quarterly numbers here in, I think it is tomorrow actually. And uh, of course it, it will be a bit exciting how they have come over this crisis period with the virus and all, all that stuff. But what it seems like is that um, the ad campaigns have been, gone, they have gone a bit down because more, more and more companies in this on certain situation, they have uh, saved a bit of money on their ads campaign and saying this is not uh, the time and the place to put large campaigns on, on, on ads here. Uh, but then again, on the other hand, people have been uh, locked down, uh, shut down, uh, entire cities, countries have been shut down. So people have had very much time at home, sitting with their devices, their televisions, their iPhones, iPads, computers, so on. So. Uh, there have been fewer ad campaigns, but it also seems that the, uh, that the collected number of hours people have been spending on their iPhones or their smartphones and so on has gone up. So that could pretty much neutralize uh, the, the other drop here. Uh, when we're looking at the operating margins, they are going up very nicely. Uh, the free cash flow is going up, uh, is positive here and uh, in 2020, very nice. We can see that uh, the working capital has been dropping. And one of the reasons for that is 
that they have uh, acquired, they have made an, an acquisition of of a company called Mobile Posse. Posse. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. But uh, I'll link to that uh, below as well. But it seems like a company that they have actually been able to to acquire on a very uh, on a, on a very good deal, uh, quite low f uh, valuation, uh, and uh, the company is growing very very much. And they are getting uh, a, a bit of another customer segment in here, but their entire universe fits perfectly together, as far as I can tell. You can read more about that yourself. But um, it seems like this acquisition is a very, very good investment as far as I can tell, just by uh, researching uh, on the surface here. So um, no dividend, of course, I should say. Um, and uh, the net debt is negative, so that is also okay. Um, I could wish for a bit higher interest coverage and uh, current ratio here. But I know that they are in a process of um, of, uh, of changing some of their debt from short term to long term debt. So uh, I guess some of these numbers will be a bit better. These are not the best of numbers, but uh, uh, it is okay when we are looking at, for instance, a sale growth at 44%. They are really growing at a very, very good speed. Um, yes, I think this is about it. We can also look here at uh, Guru Focus. We can see that the profit, uh, profitability is very good compared to the industry and especially very good compared to uh, Digital Turbine's own history. One thing I do like to see here, uh, beside all the good numbers, is I do like to see uh, insiders that are buying. And uh, these insiders are uh, different uh, CEOs and CFOs and, and all sorts of, of uh, people in the organization. And they have been buying here in the spring. But we, what we also can see here, and that is one of the reasons why this is called Guru Focus, is that it is also looking at some of the gurus. And uh, for instance, we have uh, some of the buyers here. Is uh, We have Jim Simmons. We have uh, Paul Tutu Jones. I guess some of you know uh, uh, know him. Uh, Joel Greenblatt. That is uh, the, the guy that wrote the, the book. What's it called? The Little Book That Beats the Market or something like that. Also a very famous guy. Uh, and these are actually the main buyers here. But they are some, some large players that are entering here and uh, they've already made a ton of money on, on this stock. So it seems like they're still buying and of course we do like that. When we're looking at uh, SACS here, uh, we also look at the uh, price consensus and uh, earnings per share surprises. Uh, when we see a green arrow here, it is a positive earnings surprise, and here we see a negative earnings surprise. Uh, some companies, that it's not always valid, but some companies we can see that they are, uh, it, it is very easy to see that when they come out with a negative uh, earnings surprise, the stock drops, and as soon as we come out with positive earnings surprises, it goes up, and then a negative earnings surprise, and a positive, and so on. So this seems like one of the stocks where this is actually uh, the, the, the thing to look for. And what we can see here is, of course, the consensus estimates, and uh, what we do like to see is that they are flowing upwards. We can see that the 2020 estimates uh, have been upgraded, 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 and now the uh, 2021 estimates are, are even higher, and we hope for them to get upgraded as well. So altogether, this actually looks like one of the growth stocks that I would like to uh, to buy a bit of. Now, as far as I can tell, the market just opened, and I am a bit interested to see if I have been filled. I'm pretty sure I have been filled. I have to check my my broker, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I have been filled. I was a bit uh, nervous that it would uh, jump up. I think I set a price at 15 uh, that I would like that. So uh, if it had gapped up to, for instance, uh, 1550 or 60, I would not have been filled and it would have run away from me. But I was pretty certain after this break, under so much volume, try and have a look at the volume here. Uh, what we can see is that, um, let's see if we can make it a bit clearer here, enlarge this. What we can see is that um, with the last earnings here, they had a day just after that with huge uh, volume and a gap up. And this was what I was a bit afraid of, a gap up and, and the price went up almost all day long. 
and we have seen rising stock with steady volume and then we have seen some sort of sideways retracement here and in this period maybe it's not so easy to see here but the volume has gone down in the period with this sideways uh, retracement here and then we have had a breakout under a very high volume so this is one of the reasons why i technically is very interested in the stock and um, before you start asking me what is my target and so on that is uh, impossible to say i am a trend follower and as long as it follows its trend well then i'm in but maybe it could be today or it could be tomorrow uh, I, I never try to predict where the price will go as i said i just follow the trend but let's say that in a couple of days the the moving average the 20 sma starts to move up here but the price starts to move down and starts to establish uh, itself in an area below its 20 sma well then i just uh, take my loss and and jump on to uh, another stock but this one is one that i am uh, very positive on right now and as you can see right now it's dropping a bit down you're seeing it live right now so uh, right now i'm two cents in a loss and it might it, it happens uh, not not often but sometimes it happens that i go into a stock with the one of these breakout and it actually ends up by being uh, being a, a so-called fake out and a fake out is uh, where we get out and everybody people like me at least thinks wow now we broke out and we want to jump in and then it had it, it was simply a, a fake a breakout and uh, all of the sellers are just waiting for us suckers to to uh, to jump in so all the big guys are selling to me if this was a fake out and the the price would just uh, go straight down so of course i have my stop loss in place and uh, yeah let's see where it goes from here you can follow it yourself I'm pretty straightforward with what I'm buying and why I'm buying it and I have absolutely no problem with uh, having losers once in a while. Uh, I'm doing a very hard, uh, a, a lot of work uh, to control my risks so uh, I know that uh, around 30, 40, sometimes 45% of all my investments or trades will be uh, losers uh, but as long as I have let's say 50 or 55% winners and the winners are way larger than the losers will uh, then in the long term I will end up making money so I'm not trying to predict where a stock will go I'm looking at the fundamentals I want to see a good trend there I'm looking at the technicals I want to see a good trend there but nobody knows if today is the day that the price will turn around and drop 20% so that is an important lesson for you if you want to be a successful investor it is never have your emotions in a stock never if you are ever sitting with a stock and praying and you can feel the sweat in the palm of your hands then that's a simple sign that you have invested too much with too much risk and uh, you have to get out of the stock so right now i can say for certain that even though this one drops i think it's something like 20 or 25 percent and it hits my stop loss then I have not lost more than I think it is 0.5 or 0.6 percent of my entire US portfolio and uh, I can easily live with that. That's all for now. I hope you found this uh, inspirational and motivational and all sorts of stuff and if you did you can pay me and give me thanks by hitting the subscribe and the like button down there. Thanks for now. Take care of yourself and your money out there. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye for now.